Ah, he likes my ear. Oh, yes, I love you, camel. You're so sweet, camel. This portion of the search for Mount Sinai brought to you by energy drink. Just what you need to climb to see God. Hey folks, Chuck Holton here. I'm at the altar, the Golden Calf Altar site, just at the foot of Mount Sinai here in Saudi Arabia. And uh, the Saudi Arabian government has put up this sign that says it's unlawful to trespass violators or subject to penalties and blah 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 uh, it, because they obviously recognize that this is a an important archaeological uh, thing but I'm gonna we're gonna sneak in here anyway because the gate wasn't locked so um, we're gonna go over here and I'll just show you real quick this is the altar back behind me now, how do you know that this pile of rocks is the golden calf altar? Well, it's because there are these petroglyphs all over this thing that have pictures of cows on them. And I'll go around you. So we have pictures of cows all over this altar. They're up around the top. They're around the backside, up underneath, painted in, on, scratched on. And these are ancient petroglyphs that are thousands of years old, most likely. And so, let's see if I can get up where you can see, see one of them. Let's see here. Now, what you have to understand is that the, uh, this, in Saudi Arabia, they didn't have cows back then. There's some painted on right up there. See that one? That one's painted in red. And um, there's some more that are scratched in. I gotta go around this way to find them. But uh, they didn't have cows in Saudi Arabia. I mean, they knew what they were, but but they didn't, really didn't have them. And the Egyptians had two gods that they that were that were cows. And these inscriptions that we find here are drawn in the Egyptian style. So they, these are Egyptian looking petroglyphs of cows. Well, who would have been in Egypt several thousand years ago to see the, to, to learn how these cows looked, or at least how they were drawn in Egypt and bring them here? Well, that would have been the Israelites, right? So there's a whole bunch more over here, along with what we've been finding are some uh, actual Hebrew, ancient Hebrew letters. If you go look at the ancient Hebrew alphabet, there some of these symbols are actually letters in their alphabet. So we found some uh, petroglyphs just like this yesterday that had, you know, like this, the letter H, the letter W, the letter D, you know, those sounds on this. And so I think it's very, very sure, in in my mind at least, that this is the Golden Calf Altar. Pretty awesome. This has always been one of my dream sites to come and see. Climbing Mount Sinai was awesome. It was amazing. I never knew what it would be like to be thirsty in the wilderness and the sun and it rocked my world. Then to think about Moses coming down off the mountain over to this site of the Golden Calf site, how mad he must have been. So tell me about how, like you can understand better now. Come over here so we can see the cameras. Uh, right there, okay. How, how you can understand better what the Bible says in the story. Hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> we were um, up at Mount Sinai when I was incredibly thirsty. I was about to die. I, I could hardly wait to get to water. And we started a church years ago and our vision was thirsty to overflowing. 
and now I really get what it means to be thirsty. Can you imagine him coming down here and seeing them partying around this rock? Can you imagine after how hard it was to come up and down that mountain? What was interesting, God told Moses before he came down that the people had become stiff-necked and arrogant. Then he walks down the mountain carrying slabs of stone with the Ten Commandments and sees, what, a million people worshiping now around an altar of a golden calf. And I just think, how many times do we lose vision of God and our eyes turn to other things? Yeah, what, what, what's the Sunday school lesson you're getting out of being here? For me, the Sunday school lesson, you've always heard about Mount Sinai and Moses, the Ten Commandments, Charlton Heston, you know, all these kind of things. But to see it, I realized that Moses was a stud of a man. Mm -hmm. I mean, to walk in the wilderness, and they got frustrated because he was gone so long. I can only imagine climbing all the way up to that mountain. Now I got to, to see it. I got to feel it. I got to touch it. it it's just incredible. And now I kind of get Moses and being upset after experiencing God on top of a mountain to see all of his followers worshiping idols. So in the book of Exodus chapter 32, toward the end of the chapter, it tells a story about when Moses came down from the mountain with the tablets and saw that the people of Israel were partying uh, and worshiping the golden calf that Aaron had built. He took the calf and burned it and ground it to powder and threw it in the water and made everybody come drink from it. And then he kind of lined everybody up and said, all right, if you're with the Lord, if you want to worship the Lord, come over to this side with me. He kind of drew a line in the sand. And if you want to wor keep worshiping this cow God, you stay on the other side. And 3,000 people stayed on the other side. And so he instructed the, Levi's, the Levites to arm themselves and go in there and waste all those people that were wanted to worship the cow God. And right behind me, these stones back here are a huge cemetery that they think could be the cemetery for those people who wanted to continue to worship the cow God. What I don't get is what it is about cows that makes people want to worship them. If you look at throughout history, uh, the Romans had Mithras, uh, the Mithraic god that was a bull. The, the Indians today uh, in India, they worship the cow. And what, what is it about cows that makes you want to worship something so... I, I mean, a cow is, is, is dumb, it's smelly, it doesn't really do much, it's not really good for anything until you kill it. Uh, so what is it about cows I mean, that, that people throughout history have wanted to worship? I just don't get that. It's very interesting. So this plain below me is the spot where they believe the battle took place between the Israelites and the Malachites. And I just want to point out something that may actually be intentional. If you look at this field of stones back behind me, uh, it stops right up here at this line where I'm standing up on the high ground. So if the Malachites were attacking from down there and the Israelites wanted to fortify their position, a great thing to do would be to spread these ankle breaker rocks all the way down the mountain to make it more difficult for the attackers to make it up this hill. We don't know. Could be a natural reason for this, but uh, it's very interesting theory. At the end of Exodus chapter 15, it says that the children of Israel came to Elim, where there was an oasis in the desert with 12 springs and 70 palm trees. Well, that's this oasis right here. As a matter of fact, here's one of the springs that's still here. There's still 12 springs here and a lot more than 70 palm trees.